from scottsbasslessons.com and this is a bass riff of the week number 12. And for this riff, I, I was driving to the studio this morning and I thought it'd be cool to again sort of like delve into sort of like compositional techniques and show you that these cool riffs that people come up with aren't just, you know, pulled out of the air in a moment of inspiration. Sometimes they are, but sometimes you've just got to think, okay, I'm going to compose a riff around a certain idea or a certain, give yourself limitations essentially. So what I did, and before I go on as well, I should say that the tab for this lesson, if you want to check out exactly what I'm doing, and you should really download the tab and notation, and you can get that just via the uh, link below this video. Just hit the link, it'll take you through to a page, follow the instructions, and, and then you'll be able to download them. It'll take you through to the toolkit area, the exclusive members only bit on uh, Scott's, Le Scott's Bass Lessons. So with this riff, I wanted to do a few things. I wanted to do a rock style riff because I've been getting a, a ton of feedback from you guys saying, yeah, Scott, we know, you love funk, give us some rock stuff. So. I decided to do a straight rock feel. In fact, I've just been recording the guitars for this uh, this track literally 20 minutes ago. Um, and this this idea for the riff was just I came up to I came up with it just on the way to work, really. Um, and so I wanted to do a rock thing, which was more of a straight feel. And I also wanted to do something that uses string crossing. So that means and by string or string skipping. Um, and by this, I mean something that where you're playing two notes with a an, an string in between that you're not playing. So technically, this is a bit of a pain to get round because you're having to jump from, in this instance, the E to the D. And should I, I just want to tell you something as well. See this on the top of my head? Um, just in case you're like, what the heck is that on Scott's head? I was walking the dogs the other day. And, um, and this just tells you how bizarre life is sometimes. Um, I was walking the dogs the other day and talking to a friend of mine, a branch snapped off a tree, um, fell about 40 feet and knocked me clean out. And I ended up spending like four or five hours in hospital getting stitches, the full thing. So yeah, bit of a weird story for you. So I did think I could wear a hat, but I just thought out and proud, bring out, bring out the wound, you know, so that's what the hole on my head is. So on the way to work this morning, back to the lesson, on the way to work um, this morning, I was, is it work? It's not really work, is it? You know, work isn't that fun, but this is fun. So on the way to the studio this morning, I thought I'd come up with a riff where there was a bit a string skipping element to it or a string crossing element. And I thought I'd build that into the riff because it's technically quite hard for the picking hand to jump across and miss that string. And in this case, it's the A string. I studied with Gary Willis um, years and years ago when I was in my early 20s, so nearly 15 years ago, wow. And one of the exercises he gave me was to solo on over, say, like a, a static uh, B flat chord, but um, he, he used to get me to solo and miss a string, so I'd, I could be playing. <laughs> You know, that kind of. You know, where I'm actually missing out the D string there. I'm playing on the, only the A and the G string. So, and that's what I wanted to bring to this riff, that kind of thing. So we're having to skip a string during the riff. Now the riff, I'm gonna play up to speed first and then I'm gonna slow it down and show you exactly how I came up with this. So it's over an A minor, okay? Then the notes from A minor are A, C, E, G, and A. That's an A minor seven arpeggio, and they're the chord tones. A, C, E, G, and A. And the intervals are root, minor third, fifth, flat seven, and root, okay? But when you're coming up with this, the riffs like this, <clears throat> you can throw in a lot of other notes that aren't essentially in the chord and kind of spice it up a bit. So with this riff, I'm just gonna play you in full, so it goes two, three, 
a four. Yeah, so let's just concentrate on that first bit. So here, I'm just playing the fifth, I'm playing the, so that's just the seven, the flat seven to the root. And then I've got the fifth here. So that's within the chord, within all the chord terms. And then I had a tension note in. Now this tension note is a flat six or flat 13. Um, I won't get into why it's called a flat 13 right now, otherwise the, uh, the lesson end up half an hour long. But you can also call it a flat six. So if you go up one, two, three, four, five, six, you'll see that the F is a flat six. And then I play this little motif again. And then I hit a natural six or natural 13. And then the flat seven, which is in the chord. The G to the, the the G to the A, I'm almost always playing that with the index and the fourth finger. Um, just because it feels comfortable. You don't have to play a finger per fret when you're down here on the bass. That uh, the finger per fret thing was really um, it comes from guitar players, and obviously their necks are a lot thinner. As we get down here, sometimes we have to just play, you know, smaller, make our stretches smaller. And I use the, the index and little finger. All that kind of stuff. I'm just playing. All that was with my... Oh, with my index and my little finger. Now, if, it was, if I was playing something like... Uh, I might play, you know, using that finger perfect thing. But I'm only playing with a finger perfect down here when I have to, okay? I'm not playing like this all the time. So anyway, back to the riff. So we've got... It's kind of like a Led Zeppelin type sound to it. it winery dogs with Billy Sheehan, maybe. And then the next bit is really cool. This is from the melodic minor scale. And this is cool because I'm using, I'm wanting you to watch this lesson and think, okay, you just didn't pick up the bass and think, oh, I'm just gonna search around for a cool groove. I had a plan, I thought to myself, okay, it's gonna be an A minor type groove, I knew that. I was going to have a string skipping element to it, which I have done. And I thought, I like that sort of like, that chromatic ascending run there. So let's build that into the riff. And that run there, um, I know theoretically exactly how that's working. So knowing your chord tones and, and scales and knowing how diatonic harmony theory works is such a, it's, if you're into writing your own music, that absolutely turbocharges it because you start to understand how the chords fit together, what options you've got. If you're just picking up a, a guitar and, and you know, just, just hoping for some inspiration, you know, you can't, you're at a disadvantage to a certain extent, or a bass, you're at a disadvantage because it just, you, you haven't got your, your full set of tools. The Beatles is a great example of this actually. Because even though, like, I'm not sure how um, theoretically equipped John Lennon or Paul McCartney were um, in, a, in, in the typical sense, but if you listen to their songs, 
they, they're really, really grounded with um, diatonic harmony. They use a lot of seven chords. Um, and they, so they might not have known exactly how the theory of it worked, but they knew that they, they were using like songwriting techniques. And there's a lot of two, five, ones and things like that in their songs. So they're a great example of people that um, used theory or diatonic harmony very well within their songs. So anyway, back to this riff. We did the, we did that part. Now onto this next bit. So it's a melodic minor run on A minor. So we go, we, here's the, we play the A. It's all on the G string here. Just up to the, uh, the C. So interval wise, that means root nine or root second minor third. And then this is the tension. This is the cool bit. So just up the A minor, A, B, C, and then down to the A flat or the G sharp. Okay. And from here, now I'm going to talk about the theory behind this in a minute, but we come down A flat or G sharp, E and C, and then slide down to the B. What am I doing? I actually use my fourth there, so first finger, second finger, fourth finger, that's the finger I use. So G sharp, E, C with the little finger, and then slide down to the B, and then an open D. So. from the A melodic minor because it has that major seven in there, the G sharp. And the F sharp, which is the natural six or 13. So let's just look at the riff up to that point. Two, three, four. Two, three, four, again. If you're having problems with these types of riffs, just loop them round. Three, four. Last time. Three, four. And then the last bit is like a blues type of thing. So that's, and again, I'm playing this with my index and fourth finger. I play my, the D and I'm, I slide up and back from the D to the E flat. Super fast. And then play the C afterwards, but I'm actually pulling off to that C. So I'm not lifting off, I'm pulling off. So I'm pulling down with that little finger to create the tension it needs to make the C ring out. If I just lift it off, it'd die. And then D, A, C, D, A, C, D, E flat, D, C, D, A, C. Remember the tab is downloadable. Hit the link below. Let's hear that within the entire riff, okay? Two, a three, four. Slowly, 
two, three, four. with this as well with your right hand it's really easy because you're skipping strings it's really easy to end up with notes ringing out and all that kind of thing again really slow this time So again, you're going to hear this full riff at the end of um, this lesson. And you can also download the play along track too. Um, so you can play along. Another thing that I've missed off this riff and I missed it out for a, a reason is that the time signature is slightly weird, okay? I'm feeling it in one, two, three, four. That's where I'm feeling the quarter notes, okay? Now, if you'd feel it like that, it means that there's a bar of two, four. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four. Okay, so do chicken, go get one, two. So two bars of four and a bar of two, four, which it isn't really an odd time signature, it's just adding a bar of two forward. And somebody that did this really, really well was Bert Bacharach. He had um, some really great, um, great phrases um, in his melodies that you had to, he had to add bars of two, four, and sometimes three, four, and things like that into, into the mix to be able to cope with the melody. It's almost something that, um, he, it was a great example of writing the melody before the actual song. So you ended up thinking, okay, I've got this melody, how can I make the song fit this melody? Which is why Burt Bacharach has, you know, you know, zillions of great hits because he was melody driven and not um, chord driven. It's really, really great example of songwriting actually. Um, again, I really recommend that you start looking into, um, I hate using the word theory because it's more harmony, diatonic harmony. Yes, it is looking into the theoretics of music, you know, major and minor and things like that. But it, this isn't stuff like um, that I learned at school. You know, I learned, I, I hated theory at school. And when I went to school, I learned about, you know, compound time and all this crazy stuff that I can't remember. This, what I'm using here, talking about roots, thirds, fifths, um, sharp fives, flat fives. This is stuff that you can actually use, diatonic harmony, you know. This is stuff you can use on gigs and this is why I love it and I try and get all my students to really look into this because it is the absolute, this is, this is what gives you go faster stripes as a bass player, bass player. And I don't mean go faster stripes as you can play faster, I mean go faster stripes as in your actual bass playing and musicianship will just get turbocharged so much if you understand how bass lines are constructed and how you can use them techniques in your bass lines as well. So hopefully you've enjoyed this lesson or this bass riff of the week. There's going to be a ton more coming your way. I said to myself that I was going to do a full year's worth. We're on number 12 and I also say never do math on camera. So I'm not going to tell you how many is coming. Um, but trust me, there's a lot more. Other than that, go over to scottsbasslessons.com. Make sure you sign up and be a... Uh, uh, sign up to the, uh, you can become a free subscriber over there and it'll get you access to the subscriber only toolkit area where there is like uh, discover the modes course, uh, the, the, the four things or the three things you must know when buying any bass. I get um, Luthier, Chris May from Overwater Bases in and there's an interview with him. There's some really cool stuff. So go over to scottsbasslessons.com, sign up and I will see you in the shed. Take it easy. Bye. <laughs>